I was tasked to talk about the cancer burden, uh, and I'm going to try and focus on the cancer burden in the, in the European region and the WHO Euro, Euro region. So I'm going to particularly compare uh, the EU28, the EU20 as was, of course, uh, the UK has left, versus the Commonwealth of Independent States as they were founded in, in uh, 1991, uh, the, the 11 countries, just to get a, an idea of the differences. And there are large differences in the, in the, the scale and profile of NCDs and cancers between these. And it's an important uh, aspect to consider when we talk about prevention and other, and other forms of cancer control. And also how, we, how the, the, the countries are contributing to, to achieving the targets. Are they meeting the sustainable development goal of uh, reduction in premature mortality? And are they on target to reach a 2030 target of a one-third reduction? Um, so I'm going to focus on the cancer burden, the scale and profile in the in the Euro region, and that's a vast expanse, of course, of um, of many countries, 50 countries from the Atlantic to the Pacific. I'm going to also look at the NCD burden, uh, look at cardiovascular disease and cancer, to compare the mortality trends. At premature mortality ages, 30 to 69. And now I also, as I said, look at the, the health target, which is called 3.4. Our country is going to meet the target by 20, 2030. But I wanted to start saying something about the, the agency, saying this is a joint session, and particularly on cancer surveillance, as this is uh, linked to the registration and epidemiology. So this is Dr. Vidapas. I think you've, you may have seen the, the video she presented, but... Uh, as you know, the agency uh, has been around for around 55 years. Uh, it's a specialized cancer research agency of the World Health Organization, WHO. And since its inception, it's been about trying to promote and advocate international collaboration in cancer research, and particularly the, advocating the cause of can cancer prevention. Um, so it plans, coordinates, develops research across the cancer research con continuum with a, a particular emphasis on prevention and early detection. And one of its key mandates really from its, from its start has been this collection and, and uh, dissemination of cancer information on the, on the etiology, the causes of cancer, how they can be prevented around the world. And there's so much diversity in cancer as a complex disease as we know, there's really so much more to, to learn. And of course, we, we train the next generation of, of trainers and that's one of our key aspects is as well as an agency. So in terms of our work, as I said, we're an autonomous agency with our own scientific and governing council. We were part of WHO, and we have a, a complementary relationship. We are providing the evidence base uh, in terms of cancer research, in terms of cancer statistics, that uh, hopefully WHO are able to use in their normative work uh, to sort of bring about scientific guidelines, evidence policies um, that can support the, the implementation of, of, of cancer control programs. So there's a, a, a nice link between IARC and WHO, and this is just a, a current or, or organogram, and, and this is cancer surveillance. You might see the, the red, bo red border. This is, uh, this is our section uh, among many, uh, many sections, but our, our work is really around the collection analysis, interpretation, uh, and dissemination of cancer data for cancer control. Uh, this is just a link to the binary report if you want to know more about the agency and, and our section. We're about 20, 25 to 30 staff. We've got quite a few visiting scientists and postdoctoral fellows. Um, and this is what we do. Basically, from the, from the inception, we've, we've really tried to support and collaborate with cancer registries, population-based cancer registries worldwide. We have... Uh, we are the secretariat for the professional organization, the International Association of Cancer Registries. And in the last 10 years, we've really tried to make a step change in, in developing uh, population-based cancer registries in, in low-medium income countries. Uh, we set up something as a partnership, Coalition of the Willing, called the Global Initiative for Cancer Registry Development. And as, as stated, Ariana will we'll talk about uh, what has been happening, the, the history and the and, and the work within the GICR with, with uh, the countries that are the, the former, former Soviet Union. Um, there's been a lot of work to, to uh, improve the cancer registration there. And then we, we uh, have a mandate, as I said, to provide global indicators worldwide. We do that through the Global Cancer Observatory predominantly. And as a research agency, we, we publish papers, particularly trying to answer some of the bigger questions these days on the 
on the NCD and, and sustainable development agenda. So this is what we do. Our vision is to really improve cancer registration. As I said, it needs to, needs to be sustainably developed with government input to ensure quality, quality, quality assured data are available and drive cancer control and cancer research. And, and, and intrinsic to that, and I think Malcolm will speak to this too, is the development of, of networks nationally, regionally, and continentally to advocate the cause of cancer registration, but for for different registries to work together to solve problems and, uh, and collaborate and become stronger because of that. Um, I'm going to, to speak particularly about the, the burden, and uh, it's, it's really one of the things we do is, as I say, compile, estimate data um, and estimates based on the on the recorded information, particularly we get from cancer registry. So it's a there's a, an important link between our, our work in in uh, developing the cancer instance in five continents volumes and, and actually making estimates. And we're doing a lot of work in survival and a lot of work in in childhood cancer too. I mean, we see that I won't dwell on this, but there is a surveillance framework we believe for for cancer control across the the continuum of cancer control measures from prevention to palliation and the populations affected and uh, who need to be supported uh, from healthy to to those uh, potentially dying from cancer. Population-based cancer registries are front and centre in terms of producing instance and survival by cancer type and stage and linked to that with risk factors from population surveys such as the WHO steps, mortality from vital registration systems. We can extend the surveillance measures and become more... Um, important in terms of uh, being able to understand public health and economic impacts of, of cancer. And one thing is for sure, prevention actually has a, an associated uh, economic value. You can actually improve your, increase your, your, your GDP by uh, being able to reduce premature mortality. So there are benefits economically as well as in terms of public health. In terms of cancer incidence in five continents, and Ariana will talk about what's happening in the, in the, the former USSR, we've seen an ex explosion of, of cancer registries since the 1960s. The first volume, of course, presided over by uh, Sir Richard Dahl. And we have now some 300-plus uh, registries. Um, we, have, we have 343 in 65 countries in the, in the current volume 11 for data 2008 to 12. But we know that there's still challenges in, in many countries in transition, emerging countries, um, where we need to improve the cancer registry data. This is simply a screenshot of the population registry data availability at the present time. So we have a high quality data in, in many, many, many countries. Some of those are subnational, so they're not necessarily completely representative of the country, but nevertheless, they're included in cancer instance in five continents. And then there's uh, another set of countries in, in yellow where there are registries, and hopefully they will begin to improve in the, the Global Initiative Cancer Registry Development has, has created a series of regional hubs and networks really to, to try and improve that data. And there are registry activities in some countries in orange, and then but still 30 or so countries where we have no information. But that is the basis for our, our estimates. So we're going to present those estimates now. Uh, this is just for the incidence, but it's based on, the, in essence, the cancer incidence data plus the vital registration data that we have. And it's a of hierarchy of methods we try and use the best data possible in a, in a reproducible and transparent way. We present that in our Global Cancer Observatory, just to, to plug that, uh, and there's a link for that. You can look at the data today over time, predictions, look at some of the attributable fractions for specific risk factors, and more and more looking at survival benchmarking across, across time. And this is the Cancer Today website. So a lot of information is there in terms of graphical and tabular ways to present the data. We also tweet every day in something called the hashtag GCO365, some of the facts. But it, it's well worth uh, looking at if you have the time. And I won't dwell on this, but this is a sort of standard information. That sort of the, that the main message, 18.1 million new cases, you may well know, are estimated in 2018, 9.6 million deaths, and about 44 million people living within five years of a cancer diagnosis. So that's uh, the current status, and this is just a regional breakdown. I'll come back to that in terms of uh, the WHO euro. And these are the major cancers, and lung, breast, and colorectal are really uh, the big ones these days in, in, in terms of uh, incidence. And, and many countries are transitioning towards those being in the, 
in the top three, of course, lung, depending on the on the extent to which uh, smoking has been taken up by the, the population and can be different in men and men and women. But largely these five cancers, uh, they, they vary, of course, by country and region, but they, they tend to explain up to 50% of the of the, the cancer burden. And cancers like stomach and, and liver, infection-related cancers are still with relatively poor mortality, are still uh, have high uh, mortality burden associated with them. And of course, it's, it's linked to epidemiologic transition. There's trans, transitions within the cancer profiles as well. If you look at low HDI countries, this is Human Development Index, which is a, a, a proxy, a surrogate of uh, income, education, and life expectancy. You can see that cervical and breast cancer in low HDI countries as an aggregate are neck and neck in terms of the numbers. Liver is still, still high. In medium HDI countries, cervix is still still high and in, 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 in the top five. And then it begins to, to uh, become more like, I guess, the global picture uh, with lung, colorectal and breast and, and high and very high HDI. With prostate, particularly related to PSA associated uh, increases, I guess. And also bladders become important. Pancreas actually will come to in the, in the euro, but is that there's a residual burden of infection related cancer, stomach and liver in high HDI countries, but by the very high HDI levels, they, they, they tend to become uh, less important. And this is what we, we tend to see. Okay, so that's just a, a little bit about the, the global burden, I guess, and, and, and about the agency and the, our surveillance work within the agency. Just a few words on the, the cancer burden within the in the Euro region. And this is, a, as I said, a, a vast region of uh, 900 plus million people. And they largely looking at the HDI again, this, this marker of human development. Um, they have very high HDI, most of the countries, with a few uh, with medium HDI, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, uh, Moldova, for example, and a few countries at the high rather than very high, but largely high income, but a lot of disparities and a lot of variabilities, as we'll see in the in the NCD and cancer profiles, and tend, they tend to be higher rates in, the, for example, the Commonwealth of Independent States and a very different profile as well, relative, for example, as we'll see to the the EU uh, 28 countries. And just looking at the, the overall burden, again, incidence mortality and, and prevalence worldwide again, but this by, by the WHO uh, regions, the regional offices, I guess, but in the 50 countries in the, the Euro, you can see uh, you know, quite, a, quite a large part of the global burden is within these, these, this European region, uh, about, about a quarter in terms of, of incidence, almost a quarter in terms of mortality, almost a third in terms of the number of survivors. And that's uh, disproportional, of course, to the population. The population's, as I say, 920 million, in about 12% of the population. And so although one in, one in four people are getting and dying from cancer, it's, that, that's very high relative to one in eight people actually living in the, in the region. So disproportional burden in, in the euro. And this is just a profile, and, and here we see Again, five cancers contributing 50% to the global burden, and it's breast, colorectum, and lung. And then we saw that globally. For instance, as well as mortality, with mortality, it's in the reverse order. Lung, of course, is a relatively poor prognosis, so the mortality is uh, highest in, 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 the, in the euros. Colorectal has become a, a leading cancer, and it says marker of transition, and, and breast is there. You'll see prostate and bladder, as we saw uh, in, in some of the high HD and, and very high HDI countries. We're also emerging cancers like pancreas. Pancreas cancers, the, the trends have been relatively flat, but because of some, some improvements as well in terms of, of curative treatment, for example, for, for breast and colorectal cancer and declines in, in the incidence of mortality due to changes in the tobacco prevalence in the past for lung cancer, uh, pancreas has emerged as a major cancer. And the least... Stomach cancers, despite major declines, the epidemiologic triumph of stomach cancer and major declines over the last 50 years, uh, there's still quite a large residual burden of uh, the non cardiac stomach cancers and, and, the, and the other major type, the gastric cardias, appear to be on the increase because uh, they have a different etiology. Okay, and I, was, I wanted to just compare the EU28 as a state stated with the, the original 11 countries that, were, were, that formed the community of independent States, so that's Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Moldova, Kazakhstan, the Kurz, 
Kyrgyz uh, Republic, Russian Federation, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. So these are the 11, 11 countries. And you do see similarities. And then I'm just going to look at mortality here. Um, in terms of lung cancer, you can see there is a, a very large burden in, in, in both sets of countries. I mean, it, it is one in one in four deaths are, are, are lung cancers in, in, in both EU28 and the, the CIS countries, a large burden from colorectal too, but a large burden for stomach cancer, mainly in the CIS countries, um, and, and, and prostate, again, high high in both. But there are there are some difference, but it, differences, but it highlights the importance of, of lung cancer, and we'll see a map in a moment of that. And, and just looking by sex, there is a sort of difference in that in the sense that the, the, the burden in men is definitely higher uh, and, and for, for many reasons, but lung cancer, again, it's one in four, but women, it's, it's a smaller proportion. Breast and, and uh, colorectal are also major major cancers there. And then just looking at, uh, sorry, so that was in, by sex, and then just looking at the mortality in females, again, comparing the EU28 and the CIS countries. Yeah, and there's quite a difference in the in the in the in the level of, of uh, lung cancer burden within the within the two uh, two sets of countries that might relate to uh, where we are with the, the, the tobacco epidemic and in, in, in different parts of the of, of the, the region. Certainly, if you look at the, the region overall, um, you, you see the, the extent to which the landscape is, is dominated by lung cancer and the, the impact of tobacco in, in terms of uh, it being the major cause of death around the, the whole, all of the, the European countries, with the exception of of uh, a couple countries uh, that have a, a lower HDI. Uh, you saw in the, one of the grass Kyrgyzstan, uh, Turkmenistan, where stomach cancer is still the number one, uh, and prostate in Sweden. Uh, Swedish men really didn't take up uh, the tobacco habit like many of the, their Nordic neighbours, but prostate cancer is very high. And then just in women, you can see that the ubiquitic, ubiquitous levels of, of breast cancer is the leading cancer in, in many countries in, in Europe, as it is worldwide. And, and where where women have taken up the tobacco ha habit the most in the Nordic countries, in the, in the UK, and, and also some of the countries in, in Eastern Europe, uh, you see lung cancer's leading leading cause in Kyrgyzstan, again, as a cervical cancer in this case, and Turkmenistan, stomach cancer. So just looking at the NCD burden, um, this is the global five five causes of top five causes of death. This is just looking at uh, this this premature mortality range, which is defined at least in terms of the Sustainable Development Goals as ages 30 to 69. You can see that the actually malignant neoplasms, cancers, and cardiovascular disease are, are very similar in the proportion to explain as they do. Do globally based on the, the WHO estimates, um, almost uh, two thirds of the burden, and the neck and neck in terms of the about 32, 33 percent each. So, so a huge burden from from uh, cancer and cardiovascular disease. We know that NCDs generally cause about 70 percent, 75 percent of all, of all deaths at premature ages. And then just looking at the EU 28 and the the, the Commonwealth of Independent States. A very different profile. I mean, we're in a situation where cancer has become the major um, cause of death in the EU 28 countries, of course, around 43%. But that is, and 25% for cardiovascular disease, but that has switched when you look at the CIS countries, much higher burden of cardiovascular disease relative to malignant neoplasms. And when you look at the map, looking at the ranking of the, the leading causes of, of of uh, ca if, if cancer is first or second, and if it isn't first and it's second, it's because cardiovascular disease is number one. You can see this east-west divide where cancer is the leading cause in, in, in much of, say, the EU28 countries and towards the east and the CS countries and other countries, um, you see that cardiovascular disease is, is in essence number one. So a huge difference in the in where countries are. And this is, this is a profile that will change. This will actually go go more and more dark blue from light blue, as, as you will see in a moment, because the trend suggests cardiovascular disease uh, decli declines are larger and, and they will they will uh, mean that cancer will surpass cardiovascular disease over the next 
next years. And just uh, looking at the sort of differences in profile, comparing Denmark, very similar to the EU28, I guess, 45% cancers versus 17% cardiovascular disease. Turkey actually has a much higher burden of, 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 of uh, cancer in line with, with Denmark, uh, more cardiovascular disease. So, and then you compare that with Turkmenistan from the estimates we have, cancer is relatively low, 18% relative to almost half of the burden being cast cardiovascular disease in terms of premature uh, deaths. So huge differences within the European uh, region as a whole. And as I, as, I, as I said, just looking at the leading causes of premature mortality, and this is the year 2000, and I'm going to move forward to 2016. But just looking on the left, it's 11 CIS countries I mentioned. You can see that cardiovascular disease is, is, is much higher than, 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 than cancer. There's variability in both. We're on the main, and I think Armenia is an exception, where the rates are, are much lower for cardiovascular disease and even lower than the cancer one. But overall, cardiovascular disease is are much higher, um, at least uh, three or four times as high in some cases. And then compare it with a selected number of countries in the EU28. Some of these are most mainly some of the founding EU12 countries, I guess. But you can see that the, the, the cancer and cardiovascular disease rates are much closer to each other. But actually already by 2000, uh, cardiovascular rates are lower than those of, of cancer. I'm just going to switch forward to to the next uh, 16 years, and this is pretty much where we are now. Um, and you can see that the, the red lines are, are the cardiovascular disease. You can see that the, there's been massive declines in, in cardiovascular disease. I mean, this is, they've come down 30, 40% in, in 15, 16 years. In many countries in the CIS countries, there have been, in the main, some declines, or at least a stability in the, in the cancer rates, but you can see that they're they're heading downwards, and, and if that if those trends continue like that, um, you, and and there's, there's good reason that they will, because there's, there's many things that have been happening with uh, with cardiovascular disease, tobacco smoking coming down being one, but uh, breakthroughs in, in in dealing with hypertension, uh, the use of statins for cholesterol reduction, and so forth. And these, these have an impact and a massive impact on the preventing deaths from cardiovascular disease and the complexity of, of the rollout of cancer control programs with, with multiple uh, things required in terms of early detection, screening, prevention, and, and of course, curative treatment and palliation. It doesn't, it doesn't have the, the same impact. So this is why, as you see on the right, for the EU, 20 selected countries, you know, there, there's been success in both. Both cardiovascular disease has come down a lot already. It's still going down to some extent, but you can see that throughout throughout those countries, cardiovascular disease is now lower uh, than than cancer. So this is this is where we're 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 heading. Cancer is going to become the leading cause of premature mortality in this region, in the Euro, but also in many other countries too. Just to to end, looking at the targets uh, for the SDG 3.4. So this is a Sustainable Development Goal health target. And it's uh, it's asking the the members of the United Nations to 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 ensure there's a reduction of premature mortality ages 30 to 69 of one third by 2030. And again, I'm just showing uh, this is just for cancer here for the 11 uh, EU countries, and you can see these are the drops. Um, these are pretty substantial drops, one 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 or two percent per per year in most countries large drops in, in Denmark at higher rates. So there tends to be those that have higher rates uh, have seen some of the bigger drops. But in terms of the actual health targets, so this is this is saying this this, this last uh, circle, the, the, the target is saying this is where they should be getting by 2030 if there's going to be a one-third reduction relative to 2000. And you see that uh, most countries are on target and some are actually close to meeting it all already. And then just comparing the, the CIS countries, there has been some, some big successes. Kazakhstan is certainly one where there's been uh, very large declines in what were very high high rates. And whether they're going to meet the targets, very, very variable. I mean, you can see that there are, there are declines uh, in some countries, and, and some countries will, will look like they're going to make it, like Tajikistan, um, like Turkmenistan, um, but not, for example, Armenia, 
not, for example, Moldova. So it's, it's very variable. Um, the success has is, is obviously been less uh, for cancer, but there, there, there has been some progress as well. So this is, this is, this is where we are. So I think I'm, I'm almost done. It's just been a, a sort of rapid uh, sort of analysis of, of some of the aspects of the cancer and, and linked to that, the NCD burden, particularly cardiovascular disease. But clearly there's a, there's a large and I'd suggest increasing mortality burden. Um, maybe not in terms of the rates, but because, of course, of population aging and growth, we are going to see a, a much more larger morbidity and mortality uh, from cancer as we move forward over the next decades in the Euro region and, and, and of course, even more so in countries in transition, least equipped currently to, to deal with the cancer problem at the present time, and it's going to exacerbate as the number of patients increases. Um, so cancer is becoming increasingly important cause of death, of course, at, at that premature mortality ages. It will become, in, in this century, in every country of the world, I believe, the leading cause of premature mortality and, and the, the biggest barrier, therefore, to increases in life expectancy overall. There are large differences in the profiles between countries within the, the Euro region, uh, between cardiovascular and cancer. There is an east-west divide where cancer has become the leading cause uh, in of premature mortality in the in the west, and in the east of, east uh, part of, of Europe, shall we say, uh, including this, the CIS countries, cardiovascular disease is, is much more uh, larger proportion of premature deaths. But that will change, and that is changing as this, the success is particularly and relative uh, uh, to to cancer for cardiovascular disease. And largely, lastly, there's, there are large differences in, in meeting the sustainable target. Tend to be higher. Um, um, better, better uh, trends, favourable trends in, in the EU countries uh, relative to the CIS countries, but they're, they, they are variable and it depends on the country and uh, that needs to be explored more. So I think I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you, thank you again. I'll, I'll, I'll send it back to Anton. Hopefully that's been of interest to the to the to the forum and to the audience, and, uh, and hopefully it, um, it'll give some discussion points at the end. Thanks again.